Our first recipient is Dr. Louis R. DiPaolo, Sarah and Eric Lane Professor of Pulmonary Medicine. Presenting to Dr. DiPaolo is Barbara Murphy, Chairman of our Department of Medicine. Will Dr. DiPaolo and Dr. Murphy please step forward. So, dehydrated watermelon. It's not the first thing that springs to mind sitting amongst all these esteemed scientists and physicians, but it's a perfect way to begin to describe my friend and colleague, Luz de Paolo. Most of you know Lou as an outstanding clinician, educator, and researcher, <clears throat> dedicating his life to helping those suffering from pulmonary disease. Lou truly goes above and beyond for his patients, giving them his absolute and unwavering attention. In fact, Lou does not do anything by half. Few of you know him as an in uh, inquisitive molecular gastronomer, a model chef who readily freeze dries fruits and who throws himself into complex recipes the same way he throws himself into complex cases. In the kitchen, just like, patients, yeah, just like patient care, he has learned to take something he loves, distill it down to its most basic and fundamental essence, and then create something new with it all with enormous enthusiasm. Whether he's riding his Ducati around the Upper East Side, dancing at the Crystal Party with his wife, Susan, or working as a medical director for the Mount Sinai National Jewish Respiratory Institute, he gives fully of himself to his patients and his colleagues, making himself accessible at all hours of the day and night, a rarity these days. I can honestly say that I have not met anybody, or met any, a more empathetic physician. We are extremely lucky to have him as a member of our faculty at Mount Sinai. And it, so it gives me enormous pleasure to be able to give back to him and to present Louis de Paolo with the Sarah, Sarah and Eric Lane Professor of Pulmonary Medicine. Congratulations. Good evening, and I was told I could not wear my black leathers to me. Uh, I would like to thank Mr. and Mrs. Eric and Sarah Lane for endowing this professorship in pulmonary medicine. I am proud to be associated with this family and with their untiring commitment to the science and the art of medicine. Your commitment, Eric and Sarah, translates to the improved health and well-being of your fellow New Yorkers, along with further global implications. This professorship with its role in the development of the Mount Sinai National Jewish Respiratory Institute, will fulfill the promise of a patient's clinical presentation informing clinical sciences to drive bench-side research, which in doing so will ultimately translate back to the patient and the population of the patients that the Institute serves. This is, these are the two holy grails of medicine, individualized, personalized care on one hand, in the context of population management. Eric and Sarah, this professorship honors your parents and your children. It provides a legacy of generosity, service, research, and clinical excellence. Thank you for your confidence in me, for your commitment to the Respiratory Institute, and your continued loyalty and empowerment to the Mount Sinai Hospital and the Icon School of Medicine. Thank you. Our next recipient is Dr. Zahi A. Fayad, Mount Sinai Professor in Medical Imaging and Bioengineering. Presenting to Dr. Fayad is Dr. Valentin Fuster, who is the head of Mount Sinai Heart, Physician in Chief for Mount Sinai Hospital, and many other things. <laughs> It gives, me, it gives me a real pleasure to present Dr. Zahi Adel Fayad as the Mount Sinai Endowed Professor in Medical Imaging and Bioengineering. Dr. Fayad was born in Beirut, Lebanon, raised there and in France, and he was trained in electrical and biomedical engineering at Bradley University, Johns Hopkins, and the University of Pennsylvania. In 1971, I was lucky 
together with Dr. Bert Dreyer, to recruit him. Eventually, he spearheaded as founding director our Translational and Molecular Imaging Institute, now recognized worldwide. I have three brief comments about Dr. Fayad. The first one is about his academic accomplishments. As a single or key parameter, just within the last five years, Dr. Fayad has been awarded seven NIH grants as principal uh, or co-principal investigator, and he's asked to provide consistent service in the study sections of NIH. I believe today that he can be considered among the top 1% worldwide experts in imaging technology and nanotechnology. Second comment is about his educational accomplishments. Dr. Fayad, aside from being the recipient of 10 of the most prestigious educational awards in the field of imaging and having delivered about 15 to 20 keynote speeches at international meetings, at home, and according to his wife, Monique, he's passing with honors the raising of his children, <laughs> Claude and Christopher. This is absolutely an accomplishment for somebody who is so busy. And finally, uh, my third comment is about his accomplishments in sports. Confidentially, I would never go sailing with him <laughs> or get close to him with my bicycle when he runs in Central Park. He's quite unpredictable in such matters. <laughs> anyway, you have been accomplishing so much, and I'm very proud to be introducing you today in the professorship. so much, I have to worry about the last point, about uh, not coming on a sailing trip with me. So, Dr. Charney, uh, Dr. Davis, uh, Mr. May, Dr. Fuster, colleagues, trainees, friends, and family. Uh, this year, I have been at Mount Sinai 18 years, uh, where I started with some hair, and now <laughs> this is the result. <laughs> but the ride has been incredible. I'm particularly touched today by the gathering and this honor that I'm receiving today. I'm extremely grateful to Mount Sinai, which I consider part of my family, to the Board of Trustees, and all of those who have made this incredible day possible. I have benefited from many brilliant mentors, colleagues, and wonderful trainees. But let me first start with, with Dr. Fuster, who has been really is the reason why I first came to Mount Sinai, and the reason why I'm here today. He has touched every aspect uh, of my life. He has been and remains my biggest inspiration in all these aspects. I feel so privileged to be affiliated with him and also with his wonderful wife, Maria. And I'll never forget to move on and to keep going. So that your move on is always right on. Uh, Dr. Dreyer, Bert Dreyer is the second reason why I'm here and I came to Mount Sinai. I can never forget that big smile meeting the big man when I first interviewed with you. Uh, you have been incredible in terms of what you provided me with your generous time teaching, giving me insights about how to be more pragmatic, and you've guided me through every step. So I'm really grateful to this. And later on, obviously, meeting Dr. Dean Charney, who keeps impressing all of us in so many unbelievable ways, your leadership, your vision, your achievement. And I always talk to my children about how all these push-ups that you do. Uh, and, and they still can't believe this. But maybe, I don't know if you will do some demo for us later. But uh, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> so, so many colleagues have had influence on me. And, but they're really two special people that meet some, some mention here. One of them is Ed Fisher, who's in the back here, who was a faculty member at Mount Sinai, who's been my longest collaborator. Now he's at NYU, but we still remain strong collaborators, wonderful friend. 
And the second person is also in the room, Dr. William Mulder, my partner in crime in so many, in so many ways. He sees further and deeper than anybody I know, and we can talk about that over a drink. <laughs> So I dedicate this recognition really to all my trainees and members uh, of, the, of the institute over the years. I won't have time to mention this. They're going to kick me out very soon. Thank you for supporting me and our mission and for taking seriously the passion and ferries that drive our science. And then final two notes is really a big thanks goes to my family in Lebanon and in France for the warm upbringing and rich education. My sister, Rima, uh, who's here with me every day, I could not have asked for a better outcome. And my mother, who could not make it, that's a sad part here, but we plan to celebrate when she comes to visit shortly. And really, my father, a scholar himself, who is not with us anymore, but remains my guiding light. And the last thing goes to the joyest, the biggest joy of my life, my kids. The not so little anymore wolves, les petits loups, as we say in France, uh, Chloe and Christophe. Their love and unusual questions are vital to my well being. And finally, to the most important person in my life that happens to provide the strongest support and inspiration and love, my wife Monique. Good luck with your ICD 10 venture, Je Tem. I count myself very fortunate, and I thank you all for making this day possible. Thank you. Our third recipient is Dr. Lisa M. Galatz, Mount Sinai Professor in Orthopedics. Presenting to Dr. Galatz is Dr. Evan Fladow, President, Mount Sinai, Roosevelt, and the Alaska Professor of Orthopedic Surgery. Well, I certainly hope there won't be a push-up test for faculty membership in the near future. <laughs> for me, I would not make it. Uh, Dr. Lisa uh, M. Gallitz is the Mount Sinai Professor in Orthopedics and Chair of the Lenny and Peter May Department of Orthopedic Surgery at the Icon School of Medicine and System Chair of Orthopedics for the Health System. She is an internationally renowned teacher, researcher, and master clinician. And you heard Dr. Charney say how difficult it is to be a triple threat. Some people have said that the triple threat is dead, but take her pulse, she's very much alive. She is an NIH-funded principal investigator whose basic science studies of tendon healing and mechanobiology are foundational for that field. Her monumental clinical research study of the results of rotator cuff tendon repair, one of the most common conditions in America, had over 1,000 citations when last I checked. Dr. Galitz is a sought-after speaker at courses all over the world and was the go-to teacher and mentor for difficult and complex shoulder surgery at the Washington University St. Louis Shoulder Fellowship, probably the most renowned and best fellowship in the world, that is, until she came here. Dr. Gallitz is a renowned and skilled surgeon and the first thought when they have to refer a difficult case of orthopedists throughout the region. She has published over 100 scholarly articles and book chapters and won virtually every major award possible, including the NEAR Award of the American Shoulder and Elbow Surgeons and the Kappa Delta Award of the Orthopedic Research Society, two awards not usually won by the same people, one being research and one being clinical. Dr. Gallitz is also an accomplished equestrian and eight-time winner of the National Morgan Horse Championship. I haven't seen those in Central Park, but we'll keep looking. <laughs> Finally, Dr. Gallitz is a natural leader and an inspiring role model for what is best in our profession. And it's a privilege for me to introduce her to this august group. Well, after seeing that lovely certificate, I just want to say, uh, Dr. Charney, I think I need a bigger office with some more wall space. <laughs> if I had known about that, I would have asked. Anyway, I am extremely pleased to receive a Mount Sinai Endowed Professorship as recognition of my academic and clinical achievements. 
This occasion marks the beginning of a new phase in my career as I assume leadership of this Department of Orthopedic Surgery. I look forward to continuing my academic and clinical pursuits at Mount Sinai and fostering those in my fellow faculty members. I thank my family, my friends, and the individuals who have committed to my training and education for their confidence and belief in me, and I am proud to have many of them here with me today. Thank you. Our next recipient is Dr. Allison Goat, WTC Johnson Research Professor of Neurogenetics. Presenting to Dr. Goat is Dr. Eric Nessler, Chairman of the Department of Neuroscience and the Director of the Friedman Brain Institute. Dr. Allison Goat is a world-renowned leader in the genetics of dementia and addiction. She completed her academic training in the UK at the Universities of Bristol and Oxford, followed by postdoctoral training in the United States and the UK. She began her work on Alzheimer's disease genetics in 1987 as a postdoctoral fellow in the laboratory of Dr. John Hardy, and subsequently set up her own independent research program at Imperial College London. Since then, she's been part of many gene-finding teams that have successfully identified genetic risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, frontotemporal dementia, and drug addiction. In fact, while working with Dr. Hardy, she reported the first known genetic mutation to cause familial Alzheimer's disease. In 1992, she moved to Washington University in St. Louis, and among her significant findings there was the identification of the presenilin one mutation in families in the country Columbia, which are now being studied in clinical trials. Uh, Dr. Goat is also a leader in the examination of genes that confer risk for late onset, the more common form of Alzheimer's disease. Uh, for example, in the past year alone, she's demonstrated variants in the PLD3 gene and the TREM2 gene as just uh, two examples. She's the recipient of numerous awards and honors. She re received the Potemkin Prize from the American Academy of Neurology, the MetLife Award for Medical Research, the Zenith Award, and the Khalid Iqbal Lifetime Achievement Award from the Alzheimer's Association for her, her research on Alzheimer's disease. And she was elected to AAAS in 2012. We were absolutely delighted to have recruited Dr. Goh to Mount Sinai earlier this year. Uh, she joins us from Washington University, St. Louis. Uh, she is now the inaugural director of our new uh, Ronald M. Loeb Center for Alzheimer's Disease. Uh, the center provides a focus at Mount Sinai for basic and translational research, studying the mechanisms of neurodegeneration of Alzheimer's disease and related disorders, particularly in the area of genomics. Allison, congratulations. I'm guessing, Dennis, you're going to have to look over your shoulder to make sure the dean of uh, Washington University isn't coming after you. <laughs> two people, two women, senior women faculty that you've poached in the last year. So, <laughs> I'm deeply honored and thankful to Mount Sinai and to the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation to be the second recipient of the Willard T. C. Johnson Research Professorship. It's a particular honor to follow Dr. John Morrison, and we heard about John's accomplishments uh, from uh, Dean Charney earlier as the recipient of this endowed chair, which was created to support research on Alzheimer's disease and other neurodegenetic disorders. I've devoted and will continue to devote my research to the study of genetic risk factors for Alzheimer's disease, a looming public health catastrophe that urgently needs innovative approaches toward the development of new therapeutics. Receipt of this chair will allow me to continue to do this work. Thank you very much. Our next recipient 
is Dr. Nathan E. Goldstein, Gerald J. and Dorothy R. Friedman Chair in Palliative Care. Presenting to Dr. Goldstein is Dr. Albert Sue, Chairman of our Department of Geriatrics. So it gives me great pleasure uh, to honor a son of Mount Sinai and to uh, bestow the Gerald J. and Dorothy R. Friedman Chair in Palliative Care to Dr. Nathan Goldstein. Nate is a uh, master clinician, an outstanding educator and clinical investigator whose research has led to uh, improved patient-physician communication for patients with advanced heart failure. I've known Nate now since he was a second year medical student and I was, I was assigned to be his clinical preceptor in uh, bedside uh, medicine. You know, uh, Valentin, if you'd been assigned as his preceptor, perhaps he could have become a cardiologist instead, I don't know. <laughs> Even at that stage in his career, uh, Nate's enthusiasm and deep compassionate care for patients was apparent. And I have been privileged uh, to, be, uh, to have been involved in, as part of his mentorship team ever since. Uh, after he completed his internal medicine residency here at Mount Sinai, I advised him actually to pursue health services research training at Yale in the Robert Wood Johnson Clinical Scholars Program, after which I then recruited him back to Mount Sinai uh, to uh, complete a geriatrics and palliative care fellowship in 2003. And he joined our faculty in the Department of Geriatrics and Palliative Medicine in 2004. In 2004. This makes Nate a true son of Mount Sinai, medical student, resident, fellow, and faculty member. When we knew that we needed someone to take over the palliative care program at Mount Sinai Beth Israel, Nathan was a logical and immediate choice. And over the last year, he's really excelled and has stewarded that program and helped strengthen and stabilize that team. Uh, on behalf, you know, of the department, of the school, you know, we congratulate Dr. Goldstein on his dedication, excellence, and commitment to improving the care of patients and their families. Congratulations, Nate. Thank you, Dr. Sue. First and foremost, I'd really like to thank the Friedman family for their support. Dr. Friedman's years of dedication and service to the care of patients with chronic illness and Mrs. Friedman's dedication as a longtime hospital volunteer demonstrate their personal commitment to improve the care of patients with serious illness and their families. Their legacy is so complementary to palliative care, which is specialized medical care for people with serious illness the goal of which to, is to improve the quality of life for patients and their families. Palliative care is appropriate at any age and at any stage in a serious illness and can be provided together with curative and disease-directed treatments. Throughout my palliative care career, I've been so lucky to be inspired by many people. First, I have to express my appreciation to Dr. Sue, who's been a long-term mentor to me at every step. I'm forever grateful to Dr. Sean Morrison, to Dr. Diane Meyer, and Jane Morris. They were formative early in my career here at Mount Sinai and inspired me to pursue a career in palliative care. Sean and Diane have been revolutionary forces guiding the field forward and have made me the clinician and the leader that I am today. I'm honored to call them both mentors and friends. I still credit Jane, a nurse who, along with Sean and Diane, created our palliative care service here at the Mount Sinai Hospital. Jane taught me so much about what I know about the human aspects of working with patients and the importance of sitting down with them at the bedside to get to know them and their families. I'd like to thank Susan Somerville, the president of Mount Sinai Beth Israel, and Barbara Barnett, the chief medical officer. They have continued to support my work and that of our team and are deeply dedicated to integrating the core concepts of palliative medicine across Mount Sinai Beth Israel. And finally, I'd like to thank my team. First, the entire palliative care team here at Mount Sinai Hospital. 
For the last 10 years, they have taught me every day, and they make me a better physician. And now, my new team at Mount Sinai Beth Israel, particularly my social worker, Terry Attilio, my nurse manager, Ellen Brady, my director of palliative education, Dr. Stephen Burns, and the newest member of our team, our clinical nurse coordinator, Clara Granda Cameron. They continue to inspire me, and it's such a privilege and a joy to come to work every day to be with my team as we work to care for patients and their families. Thank you all for this great honor. Our sixth recipient is Dr. Daniel M. Heron, Salkey Professor of Surgery. Presenting to Dr. Heron is Dr. Michael Marin, Chairman of the Department of Surgery at Mount Sinai. Well, congratulations to all of the endowed chairs for outstanding accomplishments. And Dr. Fayed, I have to uh, advise you never apologize for not having hair. <laughs> Dean Charney, Dr. Davis, Mr. May, Dr. Salkey, professors, faculty, students, and guests, I am honored to introduce to you today the first Salkey Professor of Surgery at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai, Professor Daniel Martin Heron. Great surgery is always about innovation, innovation in the form of creating new procedures, innovation in the form of analyzing the success of our work, and finally, innovation in the form of teaching our new therapeutic advances to others. It is our belief that the Salkey Professor of Surgery is defined by all three of these forms of innovation. Indeed, who is Professor Barry Salkey? He is an innovative world leader in the field of surgery. Professor Salkey helped pioneer techniques of laparoscopic surgery. In so doing, he performed some of the first procedures, did the research that helped define the field, and did life-saving work and world-renowned education to train surgeons everywhere to do these procedures. This professorship, designed to continue the drive for surgical innovation, has been uniquely and generously established by Dr. Salkey's patients in honor of his innovation and compassion as a surgeon. And now that innovation continues. Professor Daniel Heron is a master surgeon. He grew up right here on the Upper East Side in the shadow of Mount Sinai and attended Harvard and was destined to be a computer science guru. Fresh out of Cambridge, he joined a startup company and wrote the computer code that formed the foundation of that company's main product, which could successfully identify a common form of male infertility. The Heron code for tracking the speed of sperm movement in vitro <laughs> is still in use today to diagnose this important form of male infertility. But male reproductive failure was not enough for Dr. Heron and he returned to school and graduated with honors from the University of Pennsylvania School of Medicine and was determined to be a surgeon. Similar to Dr. Salkey, he recognized early on in the 1990s that minimally invasive surgery could have an enormous impact on medicine and the care of patients. He apprenticed with another great surgeon and an innovator in the state of Oregon, and was off to Mount Sinai where he, Dr. Heron joined three other surgeons who, as a team, were responsible for developing some of the most fundamental techniques in laparoscopic surgery, so-called keyhole surgery, which is now the procedures that are used around the world. This Mount Sinai team invented the techniques of laparoscopic bariatric surgery to treat obesity, along with many other important procedures that are now standards. In the spirit of innovation, Dr. Heron developed these techniques, undertook the studies that validated the work, and initiated educational programs to train surgeons around the world to do laparoscopic bariatric surgery. Early on, Dr. Heron traveled to China, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, and many other countries, and was the first to perform these procedures and spread the experiences 
many of which began here at Mount Sinai first. As the director of the Mount Sinai Minimally Invasive Surgery Program, Dr. Heron continues to innovate, developing new surgical procedures, and working together with the Mount Sinai Technology Transfer Office, inventing and patenting innovative surgical instrumentation. For his leadership, advancing the field of minimally invasive surgery, and his tireless, compassionate care of his patients, it is most appropriate that we endow him today with the first Salky Professor of Surgery at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. I give you Dr. Daniel Heron. Thank you very much, Dean Charney, Mr. May, Dr. Davis, and Dr. Marin. It is a remarkable and humbling experience to stand here and receive the honor of the Salky Professorship. I started as a surgeon here in Mount Sinai in August of 1999, 16 years ago, just after completing my fellowship in Oregon in minimally invasive surgery, which means that I have spent essentially my whole professional life as an academic surgeon here at Mount Sinai. I'm truly honored to stand at this podium today, surrounded by such a tremendously accomplished group of Mount Sinai faculty, some of whom I have worked with for many years. To receive an endowed professorship is without a doubt the pinnacle of an academic surgical career. However, in addition to the academic recognition, this endowed professorship holds a substantial personal meaning to me. Barry Salke, uh, for whom the chair is named, has not only been my boss for many of my years here at Mount Sinai, but more importantly, has been a major influence on my life over the past decade and a half. As one of the founding fathers of laparoscopic surgery, not just here in New York, but throughout the United States and internationally, Barry has been a role model in so many ways. He is a surgeon of impeccable technical skill and unimpeachable judgment. He is a surgeon surgeon, quite literally, the laparoscopic surgeon that surgeons seek out when they themselves need an operation. He is an extraordinary teacher, having trained multiple generations of residents, fellows, and other attendings. He is a clinical researcher who never stops asking questions, looking for answers, and presenting his findings around the world. And he has volunteered his time sitting on innumerable committee meetings in many organizations, but particularly the one nearest to my heart, SAGE, is the Society of American Gastrointestinal and Endoscopic Surgeons, many of who, whose founding members are uh, sitting in the audience today. Perhaps above all, Dr. Salky serves as a role model to me because Despite the endless hours he has focused on, on clinical care, teaching, and administrating, he has always put people first. His patients, his family, his friends, his academic colleagues, and his professional colleagues. No matter which country you travel to, every laparoscopic surgeon knows Barry. Whenever you talk to his patients, they all love Barry. Amazingly enough, with all these commitments and obligations, even Barry's family loves Barry. <laughs> This chair represents not only the many efforts Barry has put into its creation, but the generous support provided by his grateful patients who have ultimately become both friends and colleagues. To be the first recipient of this professorship is a remarkable honor that touches me and inspires me. Thank you so much. Our next recipient is Dr. James C. Iatridis, Mount Sinai Professor in Orthopedic Research. Presenting to Dr. Iatridis is Dr. Lisa Galatz, Mount Sinai Professor in Orthopedics and Chair of the Peter and Lenny May Department of Orthopedic Surgery. It brings me great pride to present Dr. James Iatridis, recipient of the Mount Sinai Chair of Orthopedic Research. His career spans 20 years with an experience as an investigator of intervertebral disc degeneration and spinal diseases. He has been awarded funding as the principal investigator from the National Institutes of Health, the AO Foundation, and the North American Spine Society in spine mechanics, mechanical biology, and intervertebral disc repair. He has published over 100 papers and has delivered over 75 national and international invited lectures. 
He has mentored countless young faculty members, doctoral students, and medical students. He is well known in the field of spinal research and orthopedic research in general, and has an established reputation as a true leader. On behalf of Mount Sinai and the Department of Orthopedic Surgery, I thank you for your extraordinary contributions. On a personal note, I am looking very forward to working with you, to expanding and building the Orthopedic Research Lab, and I give you my heartfelt congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Gallitz, uh, Dean Charney, Dr. Davis, and Mr. May. Um, finding ways to bridge the clinical research divide is really where Mount Sinai thrives. And the Laney and Peter May Department of Orthopedics and our spine research program in particular have aggressively pursued the creative insights that arise by combining scientific and clinical expertise toward common objectives. And my greatest joy in research is forming such dynamic collaborations to innovate new technologies and new ways of thinking about clinical problems. This endowed chair is really a wonderful acknowledgement and celebration of the team that I've had the good fortune to represent at Mount Sinai as the director of the Spine Research Program and as vice chair of research in orthopedics. Uh, we're particularly proud of the contributions from the ambitious and extremely talented students and trainees in our program uh, who are all wholly committed to advancing science and improving clinical medicine. Together, we're developing tissue engineering technologies to improve spine surgery procedures, to enhance the natural healing of the spine, and to reduce painful conditions. Uh, our regenerative medicine projects are also developing techniques to expand the suite of, of, of clinical treatments to include not just surgical treatment options, but non-surgical options. I'd like to thank Dennis Charney, Evan Flato, Andy Hecht, and of course our lab staff and collaborators for developing and growing our orthopedic research program, and I'm excited to build that further. Uh, there's three mentors I'd like to mention. Um, my PhD mentor, Van Mao, who's in, in the, the audience, who, uh, is, um, who instilled in me a commitment to excellence in research uh, that has never left my side and uh, also instilled the same excellence in, in Dr. Flato. My postdoc mentor, who always reminded me to ask the most important questions, and, uh, and my first sabbatical mentor, Rocky Tuan, who who reminded me to have fun when you do research, and uh, that's been that's been wonderful. Um, thanks for the support of of. Uh, I want to also mention the most important person in my life, my wife Christine, who's been by my side all the time, um, and um, I'm really thrilled by this Mount Sinai chair, which will help us to build and accelerate our scientific advances. Thanks, everyone. Our next recipient is Dr. Luis M. Izola, Gerald J. Friedman, Chair in Oncology. Presented to Dr. Izola is Dr. Stephen Burakoff, the Director of the Tisch Cancer Institute. So <clears throat> I am pleased to introduce Dr. Luis Izola, the recipient of the Gerald Friedman Chair in Oncology. Dr. Isola grew up in Buenos Aires where he did both his undergraduate and medical school training, but actually came to Mount Sinai in 1983, uh, initially focusing in biomathematics. While here, he developed an interest in hematology and therefore trained in the field and joined the Mount Sinai faculty shortly after and uh, rose to full professor several years ago. From his work in hematology and hematopoietic stem cells, he developed an interest in the field of bone marrow transplant. In 2001, he became director of the bone marrow transplant program and has grown this program to the point where now we do over 200 transplants per year. Uh, on a national level, 
Uh, he's been, in fact, a major force in the American Society of, of Blood and Marrow Transplantation, has been on committees that, in fact, have taken on the most difficult problems in this area, including graft-versus-host disease and developing sources of donor stem cells. His accomplishments are uh, uh, documented more than 150 publications. Recently, Dr. Isola has agreed to take on even a bigger challenge, and that is the integration of cancer services throughout the Mount Sinai Health System. There are nearly 10,000 new cancer patients uh, that are in uh, the Mount Sinai Health System uh, in our seven hospitals. And these patients not only have to have outstanding care, but access to the latest clinical trials. And uh, in fact, uh, this program now is one of the largest cancer programs in the entire country. Uh, so I think we all uh, have seen Dr. Isola develop a seamless integration in the system. And for these accomplishments, Mount Sinai and our patients owe Dr. Isola a tremendous debt of gratitude. Thank you. Dean Charney, Dr. Davis, Mr. May, Dr. Burikoff. Uh, I want to thank the Gerald J. and Dorothy R. Friedman New York Foundation for Medical Research for the privilege of becoming the recipient of the Gerald J. Friedman Chair on, on Oncology. Uh, since the early 80s, when I started my training at Mount Sinai, the treatment of cancer has been revolutionized, perhaps more than any other field of medicine. Advances in chemotherapy, radiation, diagnostic procedures, and stem cell transplantation are extraordinary. But so is the cost of cancer therapy, which is increasing faster than the rest of healthcare. After more than a decade of running the stem cell transplant program at Mount Sinai, for the past year I worked with a remarkable group of uh, faculty, nurses, administrators to integrate and grow the cancer programs throughout the Mount Sinai Health System. Uh, the Gerald Friedman Chair in Oncology will enable me to pursue a new challenge, help to figure out how we can deliver the best possible cancer care, continue to advance the field through the research, and train a new generation of cancer doctors in a sustainable manner. For the chance of doing this, I have to thank the leadership of the health system, my colleagues in the cancer programs, particularly in the bone marrow transplant program, innumerable friends and staff at the Mount Sinai Hospital, the patients who entrust their lives in us, and my family, the source of strength and inspiration that get me through the tough days, and the source of joy in every day. Thank you. Our next recipient is Dr. Barbara G. Vickery, Henry P. and Georgette Goldsmith, Professor of Neurology. Presenting to Dr. Vickery is Dr. Kenneth L. Davis, President and CEO of the Mount Sinai Health System. Since people are used to um, my saying more than just a few words, I may just take this time to make a few comments. I want to affirm Michael Marin's comment about hair, or the lack thereof. <laughs> I think he was precisely right on. And uh, I would like to ask Allison to, uh, Allison Goat, to find the survival value for the species of uh, what's gone on here. Um, secondly, I want to um, also comment on Dan Herron's points about Barry Sulky. He is an extraordinary human being. He does all that has been noted. Um, he does it with aplomb. He's a wonderful individual. Uh, and as you pointed out, despite all the time he spends with us, his family still loves him. But what is even more remarkable is he's got a single digit handicap. I mean, Peter, can you believe this? He spends all that time, our handicap goes in the opposite direction. 
his gets better with age. I just can't follow it. At any rate, to get to the more serious note, it gives me great pleasure to present Barbara Vickery, MD, MPH, with her endowed chair today. This is a very special day which marks not only Dr. Vickery's installation as the Henry P. and George Ed Goldschmidt Professor of Neurology, but also her first day as System Chair for the Department of Neurology at the Icon School of Medicine at Mount Sinai. Dennis, was that a contingency of the recruitment that would all happen on the same day? So, Dr. Vickery is an internationally renowned neurologist and health service investigator specializing in the translation of clinical evidence into improvements in medical practice and patient health. Her research, which is funded by the NIH, demonstrates the importance of information technology, decision support, chronic disease self-management, and community partnerships in enhancing the effectiveness and quality of clinical care. Her innovative delivery models have relevance for a wide range of medical conditions, including stroke and Parkinson's disease, and she is also committed to improved access and care for underserved populations, which is so important to our mission. Dr. Vickery publishes her findings in prominent scientific journals and is frequently invited to present to peer groups throughout the world. Dr. Vickery's election in 2011 to the Institute of Medicine of the National Academies is a testament to her important contributions as a physician, scientist, and leader. Dr. Vickery is joining Mount Sinai after 25 years at the University of California, Los Angeles where she most recently served as Professor of Neurology and Director of the Departmental Health Services Research Program, as an Associate Director of Research at the Greater Los Angeles VA Parkinson's Disease Research Center. Her current professional society leadership roles include Vice President of the American Neurological Association and membership on the Science Committee of the American Academy of Neurology. Dr. Vickery earned her medical degree from Duke and her Master's in Public Health from UCLA. She completed postgraduate clinical training in medicine and neurology at the University of Washington in Seattle and research fellowships in the Robert Wood Johnson Clinical Scholars Program at UCLA and the RAND UCLA Center for Health Policy Studies. Although Dr. Vickery's official start date is today, she has already spent considerable time at Mount Sinai learning about our institution, its programs, and its people. She's hitting the ground running, and we collectively welcome her and pleased that she's here to run our Department of Neurology. Well, I'm very grateful for the honor of receiving the Henry P. and Georgette Goldsmith Professorship of Neurology. I understand that it was established by their daughter, Lucy Goldschmidt Moses, in memory of her parents in 1968, which was the year that the first class of students entered the School of Medicine. Education of the next generation of doctors is an enormous responsibility. The prior holder of this chair, Warren Olano, was actually one of my teachers in medical school. He taught me an enormous amount about neurology and deepened my commitment to this specialty. So following him and holding this chair will be a constant reminder that I, as is true for all of us, have the opportunity each day to influence and inspire the next generation of physicians. I also understand that Lucy Goldschmidt Moses dedicated much of her life to supporting hospitals and schools throughout New York City so that they could better meet the needs of the diverse communities of this city. So in keeping with this spirit, receipt of this professorship will also enable me to expand my research in developing, testing, and disseminating these evidence-based models for redressing racial and ethnic disparities in neurologic care. Thank you very much for this honor. Last but not least, turns out it's alphabetical order. <laughs> Our 10th recipient is Dr. Robert O. Wright, Ethel H. Wise Professor of Community Medicine. Presenting to Dr. Wright is Dr. Phil Landrigan, Dean for Global Health. Please come up.
Friends and colleagues, it's a great honor to present to you Dr. Bob Wright. Robert Oren Wright, MD, MPH, is a pediatrician, an epidemiologist, a toxicologist, an epigeneticist, and a national and international leader in environmental medicine. Uh, Bob came here, joined us at Mount Sinai three years ago from Boston. He had been on faculty at Boston Children's Hospital and the Harvard School of Public Health. He joined us as vice chair of the department and director of the Division of Environmental Health, um, which he has directed over those three years. In his relatively brief time at Mount Sinai, Bob has succeeded brilliantly. He has exceeded all expectations. He uh, has led the development of this remarkable new environmental health sciences laboratory that we have here at Mount Sinai that is named in honor of the late Senator Frank R. Lautenberg, uh, inspirational uh, leader in the Senate who has attempted to, who attempted uh, before his untimely death to move chemical safety legislation through the Congress and was a true hero for environmental health. Bob has secured several major new grants uh, Dean Charney mentioned them in the beginning. Um, the, um, the $10 million Child Health Environmental Assessment Research, which is known as CHEER, which is going to support the discovery of potentially preventable causes of chronic disease in, in children and save tens of thousands of lives. He's leading Mount Sinai's uh, efforts to develop new research initiatives in the field of exposomics, which is uh, the comprehensive assessment of the totality of environmental exposures that surround us in our world. It's an approach to exposure assessment that parallels uh, genetics and genomics and will complement uh, our expertise in those fields. So it's a great honor today to present Dr. Robert Wright as the Ethel H. Wise Professor of Community Medicine and Chair of the Department of Preventive Medicine at Mount Sinai Bonn. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Landrigan. So I'm very honored to receive the Ethel H. Wise Professorship in Community Medicine. Uh, this occasion is truly a high point in my career. Tonight I thought I'd tell you about the roots that led me to this stage. In June 1952, I know that's a long time ago, uh, my mother finished the ninth grade at Nakagusku Secondary School in Okinawa. Unbeknownst to her was her last day of school ever. Her father died shortly after the school year ended, and her older sister died a few weeks after that. She was one of 10 children being raised in a home without plumbing or electricity. Nonetheless, on that day, my mother was the number one student in her class. In fact, she will always wear as a badge of honor. After my grandfather's death, she and her older brother quit school and went to work on a US Army base cleaning apartments. Together with my grandmother, they raised her younger brothers and sisters, as well as cousins who had been orphaned in the war, one of whom grew up to be a dean at the University of the Ryukyus in Okinawa. My father was an American soldier stationed in Okinawa, and she met him while working at the base. My sister and I arrived shortly thereafter, and eventually she moved 10,000 miles away to a new life here in the States. My mother always regretted that she never finished her education. I never met anyone who valued education more than her. She made sure that whatever I did in life, I was going to be educated, and I thank her for that. The Ethel Weiss chair gives me the opportunity to build on my education in a small way built upon my mother's dreams. This is an exciting time to be a scientist, and Mount Sinai is a truly exciting place to work. Our institution is already at the forefront of genomics and will soon be at the forefront of understanding environmental health. I can't express how thrilled I am to have this opportunity. Most importantly, I, I want to tell you how much it means to me to share this moment with my wife, Rosalind Wright, who joined me in coming to Mount Sinai. Uh, beyond being a beautiful and supportive wife, she's been a partner at work as well as at home. She's been a real innovator in children's health research, and I've learned so much from her and in her unshakable passion for improving children's health. With our new program in exposomics, I fully believe that we at Mount Sinai will change our understanding of why diseases occur and redefine the concepts of how diseases are prevented and treated. And I can't wait to get back to work. <laughs> 
Thank you. Convocation gives us all an opportunity to not only recognize the accomplishments of our newly endowed professors, but also the accomplishments of our faculty in general over the past academic year. The convocation program lists the international, national, and regional uh, awards and other recognitions of many of our faculty, our new fellows, and master educators, and those faculty who recently joined the tenured or professional ranks. Please join me in applauding our newly endowed chairs and the accomplishments of our faculty. <laughs> 